What's going on, people? Hope everyone's having a lovely Sunday and a great Halloween. Alex here, back for another deck profile. So, first things first, I know I've been gone a long time. Um, and it was annoying for me because I've had to try and find that balance between uh, working university and wanting to make videos. Obviously, I would always say this is I even just if you're in education, always put your education before you do uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! And, and everything like that. And um, I just felt that because I didn't have the time, I wouldn't be able to make uh, decent content. So because of that, now I'm, you know, I'm not really working as much anymore and I'm at university. I've actually got a bit more time on me to make some videos. And obviously, I miss making videos. So this is going to be uh, my first uh, video coming back after a long time. But yeah, this video, I'm going to be showcasing you uh, Destiny Hero Tri Brigade. Um, once Phoenix Enforcer came out, I was over the bloody moon. I was a massive fan of Astro Phoenix back in uh, the day of Yu-Gi-Oh! GX. I grew up with that show. Um, and yeah, obviously, uh, this deck is absolutely powerful as anything. And I will showcase a combo at the end. Um, so make sure you stick around for that. So anyway, let's crack on straight away, go into the deck. So obviously, Phoenix Enforcer coming out is actually going to have a massive impact on the game. Um, but obviously Phoenix Enforcer is extremely expensive and uh, if you don't have the money I will showcase you some uh, some I'll tell you guys some uh, budget options on what you can do uh, So first things first of course Tri Brigade Monsters, uh, you know, it's very standard playing three copies of uh, Tri Brigade Fractal um, For a one card copy uh, one card uh, combo uh, One two card combo Fractal is literally the best card for it. He is uh, your you know bread and butter sending shit to the graveyard and bear in mind obviously you want to fill your graveyard with as much beast warriors and stuff as much as possible uh just make sure you can get those revolts off very very powerful to play uh this three novel again one of those things searches your monsters nice and easy just what everyone uh wants when it gets sent to the graveyard of course and uh, considering i'm playing uh, cards such as twin twisters in here like even if you go second and you have this card in your hand uh discarding it for um you know via twin for twin twisters and then uh, getting the search off is very very nice as well um anyway playing three copies of kits the one that didn't get reprinted what a shame uh anyway either way i had mine so peak peak times for other people but yeah either way like um this is just a very standard lineup and obviously you know I play two Keras. I know um, since Tanky got limited, uh, I know multiple people uh, who actually have bumped the card up to three. Um, I tried that out and I didn't really notice much of a difference. In fact, it kind of felt like it was a waste of, of uh, space in my deck. So for that reason, I only play two copies of Keras and I think that two is totally fine. Anyway, uh, other monsters that we're playing... Of course, uh, I'm playing the one copy of uh, Celestial and the one copy of uh, Malicious. Now, I don't have, uh, I don't own Dasher, and I will be dead honest with you, it really doesn't matter. It really doesn't, um, because the whole effect of draw and uh, what's it called, draw and reveal and summon, it it's barely gonna happen. And in fairness, it's just a bit of a waste. You're never really gonna see that. Um, so obviously, it's just it's totally fine just playing Malicious. I don't think I'm going to invest like in a Dasher. I know they've gone up in price. I don't really care. Um, this is literally going to do the exact same thing as uh, as Dasher would. So yeah, I play those. Anyway, for hand traps, um, I play uh, three copies of Ash Blossom. As you do, very standard. Uh, I play two copies of Vela. Um, and the reason I, co I play two copies of Vela is actually because of the fact that I bumped DD Crow up to two. So... This is out of prediction. Now, where I play, there are already people who are experimenting with um, Phoenix Enforcer. Not proxy, but now because obviously it's actually you're able to get uh, hands on copy. I've actually been uh, testing it out. And I feel that having access to DD Crow a little bit more uh, actually has a bit more of a respective value for how you can uh, deal with Phoenix Enforcer. It's, um, the res effect on there, if you can crow the card before it comes back, it's... You know, it's exactly what you need. In you know, it's like the only it's the only way in really getting rid of it altogether. Either that or being able to send it to the graveyard with something like an A Zeus, um, because it's not doesn't count as a destruction. But uh, obviously, uh, you know, some of these cards, the crow's just good. Crow's just good just to get rid of things. Uh, I am obviously playing a call by the grave in here, uh, and yeah. 
so that's it for uh, monsters. For our spells, uh, obviously you got to play the one copy of uh, Tenki. Uh, five formation Tenki, obviously getting limited was uh, a huge hit to the deck. No, I'm just joking, it really wasn't. The consistency in this deck is still extremely uh, heavy. And then, of course, three copies of uh, Fusion Destiny, uh, just to make sure that we can get access to that um, to that uh, Phoenix and Force. Now, loads of people uh, say play just one and then go for Vertic. No, don't do that. That is absolutely stupid, and that is pathetic to do. Literally, if you open this card, um, you can just like do all your combos and make, uh, what's it called, make a Phoenix Enforcer at the end. And uh, you've basically got a monster that is practically invincible. And, you know, he is just broken in general. And then uh, two copies of uh, Twin Twisters. I like back row in this deck. Um, that's the reason why my hand traps aren't exactly as high and I'm not playing Gamma Package. Um, I would suggest, though, because I did mention I will say some uh, some cheap cheaper options. If you don't have um, Phoenix Enforcer, what I would suggest playing is three Rescue Cats and the Gamma Package. And the reason for this is because Rescue Cat enables uh, easy one-card combos. And with the Gamma, you're actually protecting yourself uh, from getting ashed if you normal summon the, um, the Rescue Cat. Uh, obviously, you know, you need to make sure that that card goes off because otherwise you've wasted your normal summon and, you know, you've, you've got to be in a bit of a rock and a hard place. So, uh, obviously, playing the uh, rescue package with um, the gammas, that's seven cards, pretty much. And, uh, you know, considering how big the Destiny Hero package sort of is, it's five cards um, in the main deck, uh, you know, you can make the space for it. Um, and I'll be honest with you, considering, like, my uh, trap card setup is a bit more uh i will i'll go a bit further into this but yeah apart from uh that i'm just playing three copies of pot of desires and just the one called by the grave um limited called by the grave uh but very standard and very very powerful again De uh, phoenix enforcer um stops phoenix enforcer on the stop on the spot so you know obviously you want to play this now obviously uh i cut my hand traps because i realize obviously i'm playing three copies of uh infinite impermanence uh, this is, uh, you know, your very standard negate card rep reprinted now. So, you know, much cheaper if you guys can afford it in the past. Um, three Storm Strike. Uh, I feel that back row has a lot more uh, value now um, in this deck because of uh, the way I've introduced Phoenix Enforcer to my deck. Um, beforehand, it, I really just like to catch my opponent out Um with hand traps but i just feel like just making sure that we've got a good back row is extremely important for the deck because that way we just have that consistent negation and even if we have the uh these cards in our hand we can prepare for our next turn without having to burn too many resources and we can break basically pretty much just bluff what we've got in our hand if we're playing against our opponent and we don't have any hand traps in our hand one importer um somehow this card uh you know dodged the ban list uh, which makes absolutely no sense. And then, of course, three Tri Brigade Revolt. Um, loads have cut this to two. I understand why, but considering, like, the way uh, Bear Brum works and how broken that card is, uh, you, you know, you can literally just loop this card it is, uh, and get this turn after turn. It's, it's not difficult in any way, shape, or form. Uh, so I just think three copies of it is the best, um, is the best thing to do. So that's it for our main deck. Our main deck is 40 cards bang on. Um, and we'll go into the uh, extra deck. So I'm missing a copy of uh, Shurag. I don't know where it is. Um, I should have an ultra one with me. But uh, unfortunately, I've only got two. However, um, this this should be a max. I believe that uh, this should be at three. So considering uh, I don't run any form of XYZs in here. That's another thing, actually. The Zodiac engine, can st it actually does still work if you have AA Zeus. Um, which, again, got reprinted, so it's much cheaper. Uh, but, yeah, obviously, uh, we're going to... I would be playing three copies of uh, Shurag. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have my third. Uh, playing the one Rugal. Uh, double bear Brum. I know loads of people only like playing uh, like uh, the one uh, one copy. However, I f feel that occasionally, depending on how the game's going, I do need to special summon the card uh, without um, you know like link summoning it. So obviously, uh, by having the second one, you're able to make the second one knowing that uh, obviously you can uh, res it back with the revolt and get the search off uh, when it goes back to the graveyard. 
uh, two copies of Furgit. Again, very standard. Um, Furgit, extender, draw, you get the point. Uh, one apples, uh, you know, negates are good. Uh, one ancient warriors link, uh, you know, bounce back, nice. Um, one doom eagle, good. Uh, the one on mirage, one verte anaconda, and the one boral sword. So I don't own access code. However, if I did own access code, I would I would be playing the access code. So, um, but if you don't own access code, it's not the end of the world. Um, but yeah. And then the final card, good old Phoenix Enforcer. So that's it for uh, the deck list. Hope you guys enjoy this deck list and hope you uh, give this deck list a go, uh, even if you're just playing it online. I really do suggest playing Tri Brigade in this format because a lot of the cards have now gone down in price. The only card that has stayed up in price a bit is Kit, but that's obviously because of the fact that it hasn't gotten a reprint. Um, Rescue Cat has now been a confirmed reprint in the uh, golds. So obviously the uh, card actually has lost a lot of value and I sold three of mine recently for £50 um, and now I'm seeing some online for about £7 or £8. Pounds. So in fairness, without like the Destiny Hero package, uh, you are able to probably make this deck for about, I'll say about £60, £70. Pounds. Uh, so that's roughly about, I'd say about $80 to $90 dollars or something like that. I'm bad with... Um, with uh, all that sort of stuff but yeah it's literally a very very powerful consistent deck um and you know just in general uh, this is a very strong uh, strong deck anyway i'll see you guys in just a moment we're going to go into that combo okay so this combo is a fusion destiny combo um yeah i i think this can be done with uh nerval i'm not too sure but like it mainly works if you just have these two cards in your hand this actually comes up very common um but for the moment we're just going to ignore uh the fusion destiny we're just going to focus on oh yeah you need to have another card just um you know if you just open a random card like this doesn't really matter so technically it's like a two card combo but considering like how revolt is we're basically just going to take this card and we're going to replace it with a revolt uh if you get where i'm coming from so anyway so what we're going to do is we're going to obviously uh center the graveyard our fractal uh, after we send our fractal uh, to the graveyard, we are then going to uh, send our copy of Kit to the grave. And then we're going to send um, our Nerval to the grave. This is going to add our copy of Keras. Okay. Straight away, uh, what we're going to uh, what we're going to do is we're going to normal summon uh, the Keras, and we're going to activate Keras's effects. We're going to banish. Uh, I mean, it doesn't really but matter which ones you banish. Uh, we're just going to banish the two. And we're going to go into our uh, copy of Furjet. Uh, so where's Fergie? So we're going to summon our copy of Furjet. Now, obviously, we don't have another uh, Tri-Brigade monster on the field. But that doesn't actually matter. We it, it really doesn't matter. Um, and the reason for that is because we're only using this. So we can legally link into uh, the, uh, what's it called? Uh, the Bear Brom, so we can 100% get the search off. So we're going to just link these two away, send these to the graveyard. And we're going to so summon our copy of uh, Bear Brom. Okay. Then we're going to activate Fusion Destiny. And we're going to obviously send our Celestial and our uh, Malicious or Dasher, whatever you've got, to the graveyard. And we're going to summon uh, the big boy himself, Phoenix Enforcer. So what you're going to do after this, if you've got another card on the field, if you don't fit or in your hand and you don't feel comfortable with destroying this, it's totally fine. Um, but basically, I would much prefer being on like actually having a revolt and a rug um, and um, and like in the dis in the Phoenix Enforcer rather than having uh, just the Rugal on the field uh, with the revolt. Anyway, so what we're going to do afterwards, we're going to activate Phoenix Enforcer's effect, uh, destroying Bear Brum in itself. So both of these are going to get destroyed. Bear Brom effect is going to trigger, and uh, you know we're going to add our copy of Revolt to our hand, and then whatever card this is, it's just going to go to the bottom of our, of our deck. So it looks like you've done absolute fuck all. However, there's a twist. We've now got a Bear Brom in our graveyard that's been legally summoned. We've got um, we've got Furgit here as well, alongside a Kit and a Nerval, so, um, and a Tri Brigade Revolt uh, set face down when we decide to end our turn. 
on our on our opponent's standby phase, Phoenix Enforcer is actually just going to raise itself, and obviously we got Revolt in the graveyard. So we uh, in our in our um, on the field. So obviously we can just flip our Revolt, uh, link, bring off uh, four monsters, or uh, you know whatever, and then we can go into our uh, Shurag from there, and then we've got to get some effects triggering off. So obviously because of this sort of combo. You're able to basically do sort of like a two-card combo um, and still have three cards left in hand. I mean, it could be back row. It could be some hand traps. You know, even if um, there are the Tri-Brigade monsters, there's nothing wrong with that. You can still make plays off of it. But if you do open the Fusion Destiny, it is really handy because of the fact that you're able to make this sort of like one-card-ish combo with uh, the um, Fractal and Phoenix Enforcer overall is just such a nuts card. Um, the way it's just going to res itself during your opponent's standby phase is just absolutely ridiculous. And this is just the reason for why I main deck the DD Crow, because I can then target this card if it's in my opponent's graveyard, just to ensure that I don't have to deal with it, because it is annoying as anything. I do think that this card's going to be more problematic than uh, Dragoon, but the only reason why is because of the fact that it doesn't really feel like it has too much of a... a um, a restriction anyway this has been uh, my deck profile for it i hope you enjoyed the video make sure to leave a like and comment below on what your opinion is um if you want to see any more deck profiles and stuff make sure to um subscribe to the channel and also to check exiles Yu -Gi -Oh, um his channel as well i'll put the link into the, the description exiles is the team that i'm a part of and my friend alan is the one who uh, makes the videos he makes some great videos if you're a person who is a casual player or just a player who doesn't really, you know, know what to play or, you know, you want some cheap decks. He really is the person to watch. He has some fantastic deck profiles. And uh, yeah, anyway, that's been my video. Hope you guys enjoy and I'll see you later. Peace.